All right, last question is, what does a healthy life look like to you? Welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Julie Fouché, medical student and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring to you information and inspiration from experts and everyday individuals for how to use lifestyle to maximize health. Thank you so much for joining me. Now let's get started with this week's episode. Hello, everyone. I cannot believe that we have already made it to the 50th episode of Pursuing Health. I first of all just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for listening every single week and for your awesome feedback and support. We're only getting started here on the podcast, and I cannot wait to see how it evolves over the next 50 episodes. So to celebrate, I've put together a compilation of some of my absolute favorite answers to the last question I typically ask all of my guests on the podcast, which is, what does a healthy life look like to you? We've heard such a wide range of answers to this question, and I unfortunately can only share a few of them here, but hopefully you'll enjoy hearing them and thinking about your own answer to this question. We'll start off with a few answers that touch on health as being able to function or have a good quality of life. We'll hear from my very first podcast guest and four-time fittest man on earth, Rich Froning, as well as CrossFit Games Update show host, Pat Sherwood, multiple year CrossFit Games athlete and CrossFit Level 1 Flowmaster, James Hobart, and finally, Nadia Johnston, who used CrossFit to overcome an eating disorder. Life to me, healthy life <laughs> look like to me. Um, you know, I think it's it's you know working out four or five times a week if you can, um, being able to function through your life. Um, you know, if you have kids, play with your kids. Uh, I think I think sport is a is a big thing. I love you know me being a, a sports guy. I I don't want to just watch them. I want to be able to play them. So mm-hmm. I want you to you know. I think people being able to do the things that they love to do, maybe not even sport, but just getting outside and, and using that fitness. Um, and then I think I think spiritual health actually goes into that too. So, you know, trying mm-hmm. to get in the Word and, and pray or, um, you know, whatever that release is. I think, uh, I think you need that. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you're definitely living a very healthy life. <laughs> try to. If I anyone to. was concerned. <laughs> I try to. Other Rich Froning is living a very healthy life. Other than the diet. <laughs> I'm asleep right now. A healthy life to me is your health, a healthy life to me is and this becomes more and more apparent as I get older you know I'm going to turn mm-hmm. 41 this year and uh and my, I'm watching my parents age and all this stuff and again things that we used to lecture about I'm now seeing right with my own eyes people go in nursing homes and things like that it's all your health markers that you would go to a hospital and get checked out mm-hmm. you know um blood pressure, resting heart rate, you know, whatever you want to check, you look good. You mm-hmm. know, the doctor says, hey, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. The right. charts are great. And then, as we all know, you can have that but not have functional capacity. Mm-hmm. But then I want to be able to actually go outside, do work, you know, run around with my nephews for three hours if I want to, mm-hmm. go hiking, you know, have that ability to do that for years to come. Those two things would be absolutely critical. But then if you're doing all of that, devoid of like the love of your friends and family and people Mm -hmm. that you actually enjoy spending your time on this earth with right who cares what your functional capacity is because you're not expressing it with those that bring you joy right so i would say that that's a a huge component of life is that that circle that you run with Mm -hmm. yeah i would say that's what it looks like to me a healthy life looks like to me i I think it it looks like quality of life Mm mm-hmm and, um, you know, obviously I'm pretty heavily, heavily influenced by what we talk about at the level one seminar. And that is, you know, the ability to live independently. And on top of that, be free of, you know, be free of sickness and disease, but not just be free of sickness and disease, have that quality of life piece. I think that's what a healthy life looks like to me, because if you have that, you know, you can then go do all the other things that you'd like to do. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's chase your grandkids around or mountain bike on the weekends. I mean, activity is obviously a huge part of that. But I I will say this. The least I know is that an unhealthy life is is a sedentary one. Mm -hmm. You know, over the last 
nine years I've been involved in CrossFit, I 100% believe now that the default setting for getting older is not just to like get fat, fall apart, and die. Like, and I do think a lot of it's kind of a soapbox thing, but I do think a lot of people believe that they're like, oh well, you know, I'm older now, so it's okay to be fat, and, or I'm older now, and it's of course I'm gonna, you know, become, you know, develop osteoporosis or arthritis right. or high cholesterol, and and I I think that's unfortunately the conventional thought. But what I've seen in CrossFit and dealing with people now in the fitness industry is that's not the default setting. It's like, yeah, age is going to take a toll. It's mm -hmm. what it does. But it can be a happy ride to the finish line. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be peak and then straight downhill. So it doesn't have to be a reality that you just accept, but something that I, in which I think that it is just based on the way our society is set up and how a lot of people are work you know working sedentary jobs living sedentary lives and the food that we're surrounded with it just kind of sets you up to accept that as your reality when in fact it's not the case yeah and I think we're far more in control of our own health than we think we are mm -hmm. and I think the ability to improve it is much more simple than a lot of us have thought in the past or the grand majority of people think and um, hopefully slowly it, it, it does get out there to, to everyone and Mm -hmm. I'm sure you see a lot of that because I feel definitely in the in certain medical fields, it's like they you know they always get the worst case scenario. Right. And and Greg has said this. He said you know we want to we want to make um, swim coaches not lifeguards. He's like the doctors, the surgeons. It's like those guys are the lifeguards. They right. pull you out of the water when you're drowning. He's like we want to teach people how to swim so they don't are less likely to be in that situation of drowning. And exactly. And I think that's a nice a nice piece to think about. I think a healthy life is being able to pursue what makes you happy in life, you know, having the physical and mental abilities to be able to do that because without it, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's very crippling. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, being able to have your health to be able to pursue what makes you happy. That's, that's what, you know, is a healthy lifestyle. If you're healthy, but you still don't pursue it, then you're, there's something missing, you know? I love thinking about health in this way as the freedom to be able to pursue anything in life that you desire. Nadia also brings up a great point in that health can be so closely related to happiness. So the next couple of guests, functional medicine physician Dr. Mark Hyman and television commentator and producer Sal Masakela, elaborate a little bit more on health and happiness. I think it really is a personal sort of definition, right? So I, the way I s just sort of describe it is it's, it's the ability to wake up in the morning and do whatever you want to do to be able to do that. Whether it's sitting in a rocking chair reading a book or climbing a mountain or um, jumping out of a plane or, you know, just uh, being with your family. You know, it could be being immobilized in bed and being with your family and loved ones and listening to books on tape. If that's what makes you happy, right. it doesn't matter. Like, I think... Um, but it's just being able to have the capacity to show up for your life and uh, as opposed to being in fog or being crappy or having issues that sort of prevent you from being fully alive. And I think, you know, all of us have different capacities for that, but I think most of us don't realize how close we are to feeling good. Right. And, you know, so I write about few books that I write. I mean, I wrote uh, recently a book called The 10-Day Detox Diet. I could write a detox book, but the idea is to, to give people a chance to hit the reset button. It's like, what is it like if you Turn your body back to its original factory settings. Mm -hmm. and what are the tricks that you can use to do that? And that's what functional medicine is. So it's really finding those things, the people in your life, and seeing what happens. People often have profound changes really quickly. What does a healthy life look like to me? A healthy life to me looks like happiness. Mm. You know, it looks like being able to wake up in the, in the daytime and look at yourself in the mirror and be with happy with who you are you know and that's and i think the balance of what that is fluctuates in different parts of your life mm -hmm. you know it's where is your spiritual energy where is your physical emotional uh energy you know there's the different levels i think that, that level that off where, mm -hmm. where are your relationships um but being able to to constantly be putting you know m messing with the the ratios mm -hmm. in a way that uh you're happy and you're excited about being alive um that's what that's what it looks like to me 
I mean, ultimately, it looks like me on a beach in Nicaragua mate with a, a wife and some kids and we're down there for the third month in a row mm -hmm. and my kids are are just surfed out and my wife's like should we go back home this week or <laughs> maybe stay one more week and i can look at her and be like whatever makes you feel good babe oh that sounds amazing that's uh that's my ultimate sort of dreamscape of of what i'd like life to look like in another 20 years beautiful beautiful well i hope I hope it happens. Me too. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I love how Sal mentions that the balance that allows you to achieve optimal health and happiness is always fluctuating. Many of my guests discussed balance as being a key ingredient for a healthy life. So next we'll hear from functional dietitian Bridget Tickemeyer, Arosti providers Ty and Garrett, CrossFit founder Greg Glassman, and author of Against All Green, Danielle Walker, on balance and health. A healthy life looks like, um, I think the balance is really important. Um, so a healthy life would be finding what fulfills you mm -hmm. and taking like a really authentic approach to your life instead of trying to fit into like what you think that you have to do. Um, I think that's huge from like a stress perspective and um, then doing things because you enjoy them that happen to be healthy. So like the same kind of exercise isn't going isn't gonna to work for everyone. Like, not everyone loves CrossFit. I'm personally kind of intimidated by it. <laughs> <laughs> As most people are before they start, yeah. Right, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. But um, I think that finding what works best for yes. you, whether it's, like, dance or um, kayaking or paddleboarding or whatever, depending on where you live, um, and things that you can do consistently, um, eating well, obviously, eating a balanced diet, cooking most of your food and including that in your lifestyle mm -hmm. um and then relationships yeah. I think are a huge one so having like really supportive relationships that are going to uh, um, be in favor of what you uh, are trying to pursue in your own life and incorporating the healthy lifestyle so that you're like working out together or eating well together or going to church together or all these things that you know that social impact is huge Balance, um, moderate, I mean, yeah. Moderate. I mean, honestly, for me, like it, it's it's really balance. It's it, it's just taking it all in. I mean, I, you, we, uh, you know, we have people here, or just just any population that you look at. I mean, they we tend to go so far down one mm -hmm. aspect of the roads that we can take, you know. And if we just come back and balance it out a little bit, I think that's really kind of what it. To me, that's what it looks like. Because bottom line, it, it does boil down the the to quality of in. What is quality for you? For mm -hmm. me, and just kind of like what you just said a second ago, it's it's that long term. You're looking at okay, well, what do I want to be at 45? How do I want to feel mm -hmm. at 50? What do I want to be able to do? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that balance is where you're going to find it. Yeah, I agree completely. When one thing in your life gets out of balance, it affects everything else. So Absolutely. If you, can, if you can keep it balanced, that's awesome. <laughs> right, it's a constant juggling act. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's totally always, a juggling. It's always act. a little bit out of balance, but you're striving for that perfect balance. Yeah. Balance. In all things, mm. you know, there's a psychosocial component, intellectual mm -hmm. component. I mean, I would I'd build a CrossFit for the brain as well. Mm -hmm. you know, your life should be full of art and I think math and mm -hmm. thinking. Um, I balance. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, eating eating well first of all um, mm -hmm. for me is huge. Um, but I would say balance between work and my kids and my family, um, just setting my priorities that when I'm done in the office that I'm done, mm -hmm. um, or that I work for myself, which I'm really fortunate to be able to do that. I don't have to let my work rule me. And if I want to take, you know, my son out of school for a half day and go do something fun, I can mm -hmm. do that. Or if I want to, you know, stop what I'm doing and go and pick him up from school, then like when he's out at the end of the day, you know, I can do that mm -hmm. or, I don't know, just things like that. I think sometimes I talk myself into like, oh, no, I need to be focused right now because it's work hours. But right. to balance that and realize that, you know, to be happy and have like a healthy, balanced life, I need to make sure that the other things are priority, too. The next couple of responses come from 2010 CrossFit Games champion Graham Holberg and his wife, Savannah, as well as functional nutrition expert and chef Umaro Kadagan. They talk about giving your body some of the key components that it needs to thrive. I would say if you, because if you kind of, I'm a visual person, so picture a, a triangle, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think one thing that I'm really big in my health coaching is that food is not the only thing that feeds us. Mm -hmm. And so 
our career is a a huge part of our life. Our faith is another part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Our relationships also feed into us. And then we have um, our our food. Mm -hmm. And so I like to think of it as that type of triangle. Um, And it can look, I feel like it can look different on where you are feeling. Like Mm -hmm. if you're feeling just um, like relationships are kind of straining you, you know, maybe working on that, making that the base. Um, But I think really in general, um, obviously nutrition Mm -hmm. is going to be a a big foundation. Um, And then I I like to put spirituality in there, your faith, Mm -hmm. um, because that feeds into every other aspect. And I like, I I just, you have to be happy in what you do. Mm -hmm. And so many people are actually unhappy in in what they do. And so I put the, you know, workplace in there in that triangle. Um, Then from there you can kind of build like you know at the top of that little tiny triangle it might be supplements Mm. i believe in in a really great strong healthy supplement routine Mm -hmm. because you got to fill those gaps sometimes right so i kind of like to look at it like that i like that pyramid that's good yeah let's see if you can top it well i just you know i'm trying to listen but at the same time i'm trying to (laughs) think of your own answer (laughs) yeah conjure my come up with my answer and I just uh i don't know for some reason i'm just going to come up with uh the three b's brain brain body and belly so <laughs> I like that. You know, I it, that. Yeah, it just made, just it, made up. it up. It's the triple brain, B. body, and belly. What's your belly? Your food. What you're eating. You know, I mean, obviously, I think you know what you're taking in and supporting you, mm-hmm. and essentially giving you fuel for the day is, is okay. an important part. And I mean, we talked about breakfast being mm-hmm. being very pivotal for us, getting just getting that good kick start, and it's mm-hmm. a good family time for us. We sure. Pull little Hattie it's cakes up, cool. and <laughs> and Storm just you know he's you know loves it. He loves his waffles or loves his about time pancakes or loves whatever standing on the chair while he eats it's crazy yeah. it's crazy <laughs> they're they're crazy and um so you know that's important we the what we're fueling ourselves with is you know she kind of hit on that mm-hmm. uh, you know brain is for me is obviously what you're what you're taking in i mean what are we watching in either mm-hmm. television or our phone or what are we um just what's consuming our thoughts mm-hmm. and if if uh, again like i said if we're putting god first and allowing that to kind of calm us and soothe us and give us kind of meaning and direction what we're mm-hmm. doing each day um, puts us on the right track as well as I've, I've said bef- I've heard before but I've said hearing that before that um, you're the the average of the five closest people you hang out with. I love with. that yeah. That's and so, so you know I think also again your relationships that she kind of hit on that feeds into your brain and mm-hmm. what you know what's your 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 jargon and what are you, what's your conversations like with people and and again, that's going to impact your day-to-day happiness. And then, you know, body. So obviously the mm-hmm. physical aspect of how are we treating it? Are we getting proper sleep? Are we getting proper recovery? Are we getting proper training and, and pushing our, our physical boundaries? Um, again, is that is that developing us to, to find kind of happiness in what we're doing? So yeah, I like that. Triple Bs. Awesome. <laughs> Well, I think a healthy life is, um, I mean, I think a great analogy also to get people motivated is to think of what everything you do, what you eat, but also all the everything you do, it's like a dialogue with mm-hmm. your body. So you're saying something and you're saying it in a particular tone of voice and you'll get a response. So if you eat something, I mean, essentially there are two ways you can start a conversation. Hey, great to see you. Yeah. Fantastic, right? <laughs> and people, Or you can extend your middle finger and you say something <laughs> rather rude, in which case people will be like, oh, well, wait yeah, a moment, I'm you. not going to cooperate. <laughs> And so if you think, you know, for, for your body, think of everything you do, what you eat, the input you give your yeah. body in terms of exercise, in terms of how you interact with people, what you do, mm-hmm. experience. It's either like a declaration of love, in which case your body becomes very cooperative, yeah. or it's, you know, a middle fi- finger extended right, right. Up, right in, in your face with rather rude words being said <laughs> at the same time. And in that case, your body will respond in kind. Mm-hmm. So... And you don't want to fight with your body. <laughs> no, exactly. And and then that's where you'll get disease and discomfort right. and accelerated aging, all those things. So for me, a healthy life or a good life is really about finding out what things can you do, either keep on doing or change. So all the input you give yourself, whether we're thinking at the molecular level, but also, mm-hmm. you know, like what people do you interact with, what sort of relationships do you have, make sure that you get mostly something where you say this is love. And might right. once in a while be that you eat something that's not healthy, but I'm not. I'll drink half a bottle of really good wine or champagne because of the enjoyment or the company. That's fine. That's still adding to that pool of self-love, so Mm -hmm. to speak. Um, And look at what areas am I doing things or subjecting myself to things that, if I think about it, it's not really a declaration of love. And Mm -hmm. how can I do something about that? 
Finally, we close with two responses about gratitude. Dr. Mike Canales, my former gymnastics coach and foot and ankle surgeon, as well as Jason Wackab, CEO of Mind Body Green, reflect on the importance of gratitude in achieving optimal health. A healthy life to me is filled with a lot of the elements that we talked about. Um, you know, it goes back to to the mind, body, and spirit. But when you are truly filled with gratitude, a, a life of gratitude to me is very, very healthy. When you're grateful for your health, that in turn rolls into making sure that you protect that body of yours, making certain that you treat your body as a temple, making sure that you're eating right, you're exercising, and you're using your body. It, it When you are grateful, it allows you time to meditate because that's the only time that you, you can do that. Um, so a life filled with, with true, bona fide, genuine gratitude, I think is the healthiest. That is the uh, the healthiest life to me. Yeah, we can talk about diet. I'm not, I'm not good with that. Um, I don't know anything about that, but I know how powerful gratitude has been in my life, and I think that is the number one item that has helped me lead a lifestyle that is moving toward that probably asymptote of of healthiness, mm -hmm. zen or nirvana, <laughs> whatever it is. It is that gratitude because it, it spills into every other area of one's life. And so uh, I am no expert, but if you can be grat you know, if you can think back and, and be very thankful, not just on Thanksgiving, but be very thankful for what you have, um, great things happen in your life. And, and I think it, it moves over into that mind, body, and spirit. So gratitude. You have to have a life filled with gratitude. It's waking up, feeling grateful, uh, having purpose, and marrying that with a healthy plate for whatever that looks like for you, and relationships that are you know meaningful and deep. Um, and also putting everything all out there, you know, living each day to its fullest, whatever that looks like, and, and feeling uh, not empty, so to speak, but like closing the day feeling like you've put everything out there, you've mm -hmm. gave it your all, and I think that is living a healthy, purposeful life for I love me. It. I love it. That's a great feeling to have at the end of the day. And I love, what I love about it is that you're really the only one who knows if you have that feeling and no one else yes. knows. Yes. And some people hate that. Yeah. Because, well, it's like, I, I think people struggle with this idea of we're in a society where it's like, just tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's always easy, you know, but I think true health, true success, true happiness, it's not going to be any book. It's not going to be any guru like it's unique to you. And fortunately or unfortunately, you're the only person who knows <laughs> right. what that looks like. You can <laughs> read all you want. You can all that stuff is great. But at the end of the day, you're the only one who knows the answers are within. Well, there you have it, folks. On that note, I just wanted to say again that I am so grateful for all of you for listening each week to Pursuing Health and for all of your incredible support. So thanks for tuning in for this special 50th episode, and I'll see you next time here on Pursuing Health. To make sure you never miss an episode and to receive exclusive content from me, head to my website, juliefouché.com, where you can subscribe to my email list. Also, don't forget to share your stories. If you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please email me at info at juliefouché.com. I'll choose some of these inspiring stories to share here on the podcast in future episodes. If you like what you hear, don't forget to subscribe and consider giving the podcast a five-star rating on iTunes. Also, don't forget you can train with me by visiting beyondthewhiteboard.com slash Julie Fouché. I always love hearing your feedback, so please leave comments under this post on my website, juliefouché.com, and share your thoughts on social media with the hashtag JFHealth. 
Thank you again so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time on Pursuing Health. Thank you.